Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. I think this one is gonna be pretty interesting. It may be more disliked than some other videos because there are still a lot of GameStop bag holders out there that are probably not gonna like the position that I'm currently holding on GameStop. So on January 28th, I took a March 19th $50 put on GameStop. Now before you go crazy, I know the implied volatility was high. I know it would take a lot for this move to actually make me money, but I wanted to take this as an experiment to see what would happen and show you guys what would happen when you buy puts or buy calls in an extremely high implied volatility environment. So I bought these puts when the stock was at $250 and the stock is now at $50 and I am profitable on the puts, but it is not as much as you would anticipate. And that's why in today's video, I'm going to explain this to you and show it to you on the charts behind me. So if you don't already hate me from the intro and you're not bag holding GameStop, then make sure to run up the likes for me on this one. Make sure to subscribe for some future videos and press that bell notification so you know every single time that I post on the channel. So before we dive into the charts and confuse some people that aren't too familiar with implied volatility, let me go ahead and break this down for you. So if you are looking at option contracts and there is an implied volatility that is relatively high, let's say above 250%, that means that you are technically overpaying for the contract. There is an implied movement in the future that's already priced into those contracts. So the higher the implied volatility, the more movement that is already implied into the stock price. So let's say you have a stock that's trading at $100. If the contract that you're going to buy has an implied volatility of 50%, a $1 move in that stock price will make you a lot more money on the option contract that has an implied volatility of 50%. If the implied volatility of that same stock and that same contract is now 500%, a $1 move on that stock will not make you as much money because it is already implied that that stock will move a certain percentage point. So when you bring this example into GameStop, the put options that I bought had an implied volatility of over 500%. Now, with that 500% implied volatility, that means there would have to be a monstrous move for my put options to increase in value. Now, at that same time, the implied volatility would continue to decrease as GameStop's stock price decreases, which means my option contracts are really up against a lot for them to become profitable. So before all the technical option pricing people down below let me know that I'm not correct with my definition, please understand that I'm just coming across as simple as possible for someone that is new to options and doesn't know how they're priced to make sure they understand this concept before they buy calls or buy puts in an extremely high implied volatility environment. Now, if you're not understanding this by me talking to you, let me go ahead and pull up the charts. I'll show you two different charts and I think this will really clear up everything if you have any questions on it. Okay, so first let's go ahead and look at these charts and understand this concept a little bit more with the charts. It'll be a little bit more visual for you guys out there. And then we'll pull up the put options that I'm currently holding. So here on the left side is the GME chart. This is the one hour chart over the last 15 days, I believe, or over the last 10, 10 days. So actually, I'm sorry, it's over the last 30 days, but I have it sort of zoomed in. So from Monday, of last week to Monday of this week. So we have about 14 days, two weeks here. So that is the GME chart and it's the one hour candles. Obviously what you guys can tell is after we broke this $250 support, as well as this $200 support, there has been a lot of downturn. And really at this point, I think the move may be over. I'm not gonna go ahead and claim that because a lot of things can happen, but we can definitely tell that the stock is trending down and it's not looking pretty. So. On the right side, we have my option. So this is the March 19th to $50 put, and it is the price that's graphed out by hour. And these lines that you guys can see are the prices that I paid for the contract and the price of the stock when I purchased it. So I paid $17.25 on the 28th of January, which is on this day right here. So on the 28th of January, and that same day, the stock of GME was trading at $250, and this is the 28th of February. So the stock was at 250 when I purchased it, and the contract was at 1725 when I purchased it. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is this line down here. This blue line that you guys can see, this is the implied volatility of GameStop stock. So when I purchased the put options on the 28th, the implied volatility was near its high, over 500%, almost 600% implied volatility. This is extremely high for a stock. 
almost ir like totally irrational. So we were at five, six hundred percent implied volatility, and you can see from this point forward, we started to see a dip in implied volatility, which is affecting the prices of this contract. So first, let me just go ahead and pull up my contract so you guys believe me. Here it is. This is the March nineteenth, fifty dollar put. I bought it for seventeen twenty five on the twenty eighth at one o'clock. So that is my put option that I bought. So. First thing that we have to talk about here is you can see that GameStop has been falling. And what do you notice on the options price? It's been completely flat. It has not deviated between about 1230 and 20, let's just call it 21. So from 21 to 1230, the option has been trading between for the last two weeks. Now, what has GameStop stock been doing for the last two weeks? It's been completely falling. Right, it's fallen from two almost four hundred dollars a share to fifty dollars a share, and from this point to this point, the contracts have basically stayed flat. So there has been no movement. Now, why is that? That is because of the implied volatility that has been continuously decreasing, which is affecting the prices of this contract. And when you buy contracts at a really high implied volatility you need a ridiculously big move for these contracts to actually increase. And while this implied volatility sort of slows down and decreases, you're basically deflating the price of the options contract. Now today was a good day for these put options and I'll sort of explain why. What you guys can see today is right here and these put options went from $13 a contract to about $19 a contract. So a really nice increase for me today which put me profitable. So anything above 1725, I am profitable on these contracts. Anything below, I'm in a loss. Now the reason why these went up today was because if you notice this line here, you'll see that today the implied volatility from open actually increased. So if the implied volatility is increasing, that's helping the increase the price of these contracts and the stock price was completely falling today. So from almost $100 a share to $50 a share. We fell $50 per share today and my put options were able to increase because we did not see a large deflation of implied volatility. On these other days, for example, this day where we stayed flat, we fell the entire day. Implied volatility fell the entire day. On that day, the stock price or the put options you can see decreased quite a bit. So we stayed flat, implied volatility dropped, Option, uh, the put option contracts lost a lot of value. Now here's another pretty interesting day. Right here on this day, we had a pretty large drop in the stock price, huge drop in implied volatility. And on Monday, you can see, even though the stock price fell this much, my contracts, my put options fell a ton in value. So even though the stock was falling, the implied volatility was getting killed. It was a big dip in implied volatility and that really affected the option contract. So I hope that is making sense. If there is a dip in implied volatility, even though the stock is falling, these put options can still lose value. That's why in an environment like this, it's obviously more advantageous to short sell this stock, but there are definitely cons to that as well. Though it's hard to borrow fees, you have to find a broker that allows you to borrow it. There's margin requirements. So it's not this easy as clicking a button and saying I wanna short sell GME. That's why I tried the put option route it may be a profitable trade, right? This is a March 19th, $50 put. We are just about in the money and it is just the beginning of February. So if GME goes to 20 or goes to 10 or goes to five and I have a $50 put, that I, I think will definitely be a profitable trade. So here's a nice thing, right? So here's the nice thing to think about. I was right on the trade. I bought a $50 put when the stock was at $250. So the direction that I was thinking was right. I was right with the direction. But what you have to take into consideration, even though I was right with the direction, is how high the implied volatility was when I bought these put options. I hope this makes sense. Hope you guys can just sort of visually see this. You can see GameStop really fell off the cliff while these option contracts stayed completely flat. Now my hope here is that implied volatility can sort of flatline. We can continue to fall on GameStop and these put options can get some really nice value as these go in the money. So guys, I hope that that explanation made sense. I think I did a pretty decent job at explaining it. It's definitely a little bit more of an advanced topic. You would think if a stock price falls, put options should go up in value, 
but the key factor there is how high the implied volatility was. That's why there's a lot of people around the internet saying don't buy puts because the implied volatility is so high. They were right about it. I took them anyway because I wanted to see how this would play out. I thought it would be a great learning opportunity for you guys out there. I still think they can be profitable. It's not going to be a monstrous trade. I won't make $100,000 on these put options, but I'm profitable right now. I'm up on the position, so we'll see how that turns out. So if you enjoyed the explanation, if you don't hate me because I have put options on GME, make sure to smash that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel for some more videos like this, as well as some live trading videos. Press that bell notification so you know every single time that I post, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.